Hello everyone. I'll be giving series of lectures on information theory and coding subject. In module, we'll start with module 1. In this session, we'll learn the basic concepts of information theory, concept of amount of information, properties of information, average information or entropy, and illustrating examples for entropy. Let us first see what do we mean by the term information in information theory and coding. The term information means message or intelligence present in any event. The message can be in analog form or it can be in discrete form. When I tell analog form, it will be an electrical message. If we tell it in discrete form, it will be in terms of symbols, numbers or letters. Message can be speech message or picture message. The source which produces messages, either it can be an analog source or a digital source, analog signal or a digital signal. The source which produces messages are called as information source. Basics of information system. The block diagram of information system consists of information source, encoder, transmitter, channel, decoder and receiver. Let us study each of the block in detail. When we tell information source, we know that information source are the source which generates the messages or information. There are two types of information source, analog information source and digital information source. When we tell analog information source, they produce the signals, they produce continuous time signals. That means signals whose amplitude continuously varies with time t. If we tell discrete information source, they produce letters, symbols, they produce discrete information. Discrete information source are characterized by the following features. First one is source alphabet. Source alphabet is set of symbols which are generated by the information source. That means S is equal to S1, S2. These are the set of symbols generated by the information source. That is called as source alphabet. Symbol rate, rate at which symbols are generated. Rate at which symbols are generated is called as symbol rate. When we come to source alphabet probabilities, the probabilities of each symbol, what is the probability of occurrence of each symbol? That is called as symbol rate probability. So in the block diagram, we have seen information system where information source is a first block. The information source which will be considered here throughout will be the discrete source. It will be emitting discrete symbols. What are the symbols emitted? Let the symbols be emitted be S1, S2 up till SQ from the information source with the probability of occurrence be P1, P2, PQ respectively. So we tell the sum of all if P1, P2, PQ are the probabilities of the symbols then the summation of all these probabilities equal to 1 which means I write this as summation i is equal to 1 to q. I have probabilities from 1 to q. p i is equal to 1. The next block was the source encoder in our block diagram. Now the information source generates the symbols, correct? S1, S2, S3 and so on. And it has been given to the source encoder. That is the input to the source encoder. Now the source encoder what does it do? It converts each of the symbols to zeros or ones. That is called as encoding procedure, encoding technique. We have different algorithms of encoding. That is in the further units. The source encoder converts the symbol sequence by assigning either zeros and ones to the symbols. That is a function of source encoder. This scheme is called as encoding scheme. Next block in the block diagram is the transmitter. Now the output zeros and ones. The output of source encoder is what? Zeros and ones. This has been given to the transmitter. So that is the main function. Now the transmitter couples the input message to the channel. So in the block diagram we see we have transmitter, we have channel. The output of encoder is zeros and ones. This has been given to the transmitter. In order to reach the receiver, it has to give it through the channel. So the main function of the transmitter is to couple the sequence of zeros and ones to the channel. Other functions are also include amplification, 
filtering and modulation. Channel, this provides connection between transmitter and receiver that is source and destination. So now zeros and ones are the input to the channel. These zeros and ones, when they transmit through the channel, what happens? Always noise is getting affected to it. As a result of which, now there can be a bit flip. That means zeros changing to ones and ones changing to zeros. Under that circumstances, we say signals are corrupted by noise when it transmits through the channel. Output of the channel is then given to the decoder. That is the next block. What is the function of the decoder? Now the, see, now the information is in present in terms of zeros and ones, but we want it in terms of symbols, S1, S2 and S, S, SQ, so on. So the main function of the decoder is to convert back the zeros and ones to the symbol sequence. But still, when, when it, it still, when it reaches the receiver, it is still corrupted by noise. The main function of the receiver is to identify the correct symbol sequence and match it with the Sequence. So this is how information is transmitted in terms of zeros and ones in digital communication. So after we study the block diagram, let us study what is the concept behind the amount of information. Suppose we consider we are planning to a trip to certain place. We have to pack the clothes. So we have to know the weather forecast condition of that particular place. In order to know the weather forecast condition, let I have given you three statements. First one is sun will rise. Second, there will be a scattered rain. Third, there will be a tornado. When I tell the first statement, sun will rise. This is a statement which is sure to occur. When I tell this statement, it is a statement which is sure to occur. It is a certain event. Always, it has high certainty. I tell it has high certainty. That means this event is sure to occur. This event is sure to occur. So I can easily tell the first information, the first message is not conveying any information to me because I already know. I means what? We means what? The receiver. We are the receiver. We already know that the sun is going to rise. There is no such new information being conveyed to it. It is an event which is occurring with high probability. It is 100% probability. It will rise. Sun will rise. It is a 100% probability. So I tell the first message is not conveying any information. The first event is not conveying any information because receiver knows that sun will sure to occur. It is a certain event. It is a 100% probability event. It will occur. Nobody need to tell us that sun is going to rise. We all know. We as the receiver know. When I take, when I get this message, I am the receiver and I know that it is the it is the event which will occur. It is sure to occur. It is a 100% probability event occur. So I tell first message is not conveying any information to the receiver or to us. Coming to the second one, there will be scattered rain. Now it provides information which is precisely available to, to us. There might be rains or there might not be rains. It provides some information, but it provides moderate information. Okay, because the probability of occurrence is 50-50. It may, there may be scattered things, there might not be rain. So I tell the probability of occurrence is medium. As a result of which I tell the second invent carries moderate information. Now, when I come to the third invent, there will be a tornado. This is an uncertain event. That means it is having, it is not sure to occur, not sure to occur. So I tell the third one is not sure to occur. It might, it is not sure to occur. Here it might or it might not occur. Here it will occur. The first thing, the first event sun will rise, it will occur. Second event when we come, we are not sure. It might or it might not. But here it is not sure to occur at all. It is an uncertain event. It is a rare event. Hence, this is carrying us more information. There will be a tornado. That event is carrying more information. This event carries more information as probability of occurrence is low. So, an event whose probability of occurrence is low carries more information. Okay, 
event whose probability of occurrence is low which is a rare event which is an uncertain event always carries more information that is what we i i try to tell amount of information each each event is closely related to its uncertainty more the uncertainty more is the amount of information carried okay and the messages which are processing high probability of occurrence they relatively carry less information as the information carrying the message is carrying the as the event which is carrying information is uncertain is rare whose probability is very very low carries maximum information as a result we tell that an event which is sure to occur whose probability of occurrence is more which is an not an uncertain event it carries zero information the sun will set the sun will rise these are all the events which are sure to occur it is not giving us any information but there will be a cyclone there will be a tornado all these are the events which will which are not sure to occur they are rare it needs lot of study to give such information we cannot give it on the spot as a result such information which are very rare which are very uncertain is going to carry us more information more information to us hence with this concept we define information as let me define sk is an event with probability pk then i define amount of information or self information given by i suffix k which is given by log of 1 by pk that means any information or amount of information depending on probability this is to the base 2 we can also be from this we tell higher the probability of occurrence less is the amount of information lower the probability of occurrence more is the amount of information so the event which has low probability of occurrence always carries more information that is what is called as self information or amount of information definition that is how it is related to probability of an information so log 2 to the log 1 by pk to the base 2 for simplification we write it as log 1 by pk to the base 10 divided by log 2 to the base 10 why log 2 to the base 2 because here we are using information in bit bits the base of log 2 is used and we always use two bits 0 and 1 so we always tell that as log 2 to the base 2 what are the properties of information after the concept after the definition let us study the properties now the first property tells us that the same things the same definition of information the message the event which has more uncertainty which has less probability of occurrence carries maximum information that is the first property second property is if the receiver knows what is the message being transmitted that means the sun will set we be in the receiver we know that sun will set we no need not no one no one need to tell us that sun is going to set we know it we know the prior event what is going to happen we know initially only we know the event such information carried by such an event is zero now i if i1 is the information carried if i1 is the information carried by message or event s1 and i2 is the information carried by message s2 then total information is given by i1 plus i2 next similarly we also know that amount of information amount of information or self information is given by log to the base to 1 by pk now ik is 0 if pk is equal to 1 then we tell ik is 0 that means if probability of occurrence of any event is maximum if it is 100% probability then pk will be equal to 1 then self information is said to be 0 and what is the range of self information greater than or equal to 0 that is the one property now we know that amount of information carried by each message is said to be n bits if there are m equal to 2 par n equally likely messages if m messages are there which are having same probability of occurrence and it is equal to 2 par n then information carried by each message is said to be n bits let us study the self information concept with the help of an example the binary symbol 0 and 1 are transmitted with probabilities 1 by 4 and 3 by 4 respectively find the corresponding self information how to find self information we know the equation for self information is ik log 1 by pk to the base 2 
Now if I want self information in symbol 0, then log to the base 2, what is the probability 1 by 4, 1 by 1 by 4 becomes 4. So here I write log 4 to the base 10 divided by log 2 to the base 10. This is how I simplify. I get it as 2 bits. Next, but if I want self information in symbol 1 whose probability is log to the base 2, 3 by 4, 1 by 1, 3 by 4 becomes 4 by 3 and I get this as 0.415 bits. We see that lesser the probability with, with, with compared to symbol 0 and 1 then I compare, I tell the probability of occurrence of symbol 0 is less. That means it carries more information. 1 is having more probability compared to 0. So it carries less information. So it is observed that more information is carried by less likely message. Next property we have to prove is if there are n equally likely independent messages that means having the same property of occurrence then the message carried by the information will be i equal to n bits where n is 2 power n. We know self information is given by log to the base to 1 by pk. Since all messages are equally likely probability of occurrence is given by pk is 1 by m. So log to the base to 1 by pk, pk is 1 by m, I write this as m. So here what is m given by? m is given by 2 power n equally likely messages. I get this or else I will write log, log to the base to 2, I write n into log 2 to the base 2. This is equal to 1 and left out with n bits. Next is if i1 is the information carried by message m1, i2 is the information carried by message m2, then total information is the summation of the individual self information. So when I write for i1 and i2, for i1 I write log to the base 2 1 by p1 and i2 log to the base 2 log to the base 2 1 by p2. So here what is i is equal to log to the base 2 1 by p1 p2. This can be in turn written as log of ab is log a plus log b. So log to the base 2 1 by p1 plus log to the base 2 1 by p2 which is in turn equal to i1 plus i2. This is equal to i1 plus i2. So total information can be the summation of individual information also. Next. Next proof is if the receiver knows the message what is transmitted then amount of information is 0. As I gave the example the sun will rise or sun will set. Here the receiver already knows what is the message what is the information given by that message. What is the information sun will set is the information of that for that event but sun is surely going to set. There is nothing new in that and you need not require anybody to tell us that the sun is going to set because we already know it. So it is a sure occur, event to occur and the probability of such event is said to be 0 that is what self information is 0 is to be proved. So when I tell if the receiver knows the message it is sure to occur means probability is equal to 1. So I substitute pk as 1 I get this as 0 log 1 by log 2 it is 0. So the amount of information ik what I get if probability is 100% is 0. Next we will discuss what are 0 memory source. Here we have defined information source to be discrete information source that is information source emitting symbol 0 and 1 or emitting symbols S1, S2 up till S3 and then they are encoded as zeros and ones. Now such sources which are emitting discrete so informations are discrete symbols are discrete information source. What do we mean by zero memory source? Such a discrete information source which are going to generate the symbols and they are independent of one another. Suppose the information source generating the symbols S1, S2 up till SQ and each symbol is independent of one another. There is no connection between symbol S1, S3, S2, S1 and so on. Such information source are said to have no memory and they are called as zero memory source. So what is zero memory source? The information source which is emitting the symbols S1, S2, S3 up till SQ are independent of one another. There is no connection between them. That is the emission of any symbol is not dependent on previous symbol. Such information sources are called as zero memory source.
let us next deal with the next concept average information content or entropy let us consider a zero memory source just now i defined what is zero memory source producing the symbols s1 s2 sq independent symbols with probabilities p1 p2 p3 respectively let us consider a long independent sequence of length l let the length of such symbols be l is considered now this long sequence contains symbols s1 s2 up till sq l is the length of the symbols now what is the information present in each of the symbol p1 a number of messages contain what is the self information p2 a number of messages to contain self information that is self information equation p1 log 1 by p1 that is what uh, log of 1 by p1 is our self information equation but as a I am considering length in the uh, length of the sequence is L. So I get P1 L number of messages of S1 contains that is the information, this unit of info up till PQL. Now I can add the individual total info self information that is P1 L log 1 by P1 and so on. So I get I total is equal to L is common for all the terms. Then I write summation here it is P1 P2 up till PQ pi log 1 by pi and it unit is bits this is what i total now if i want average self information average self information if i want average self information it is i total by l because i have l number of messages what is i total summation pi log 1 by pi into l divided by l ll is getting cancelled so i am left out with pi log 1 by pi that is the entropy so i write entropy is equal to which is denoted by h of s is equal to summation i is equal to 1 by q pi log 1 by pi or i can also write pi log 1 by pi is self information i i no h of s i can write it as instead of log 1 by p i substitute as self information i so i can write this as pi into li bits per message symbol so average self information so entropy gives you the entropy tells you about the average self information we know log of 1 by p 1 by p tells you about the self information but pi log 1 by pi tells about the average self information that is what gives us the definition for entropy which is h of s entropy is denoted by h of s so i tell entropy tells us the average self information or it represents average uncertainty of the source again it's the same concept if the uncertainty is very less uncertainty is less that means lesser the probability more easier to guess which symbol will occur but maximum uncertainty it is impossible to guess which symbol will occur or transmitted that is again denoted by entropy which tells us the average uncertainty of the source or it gives the average self information it gives me average self information that is what we mean by entropy h of s which is given by pi log 1 by pi over the summation 1 to q let me illustrate entropy because it tells us average uncertainty of the source so based on probabilities how are we finding the entropy let us consider two symbols emitted with probabilities now if i want to find what is the entropy for each of this at pi log 1 by pi what is first symbol probability 1 by 256 log of 1 by 256 plus p2 255 by 256 log of this so h of s i get bits per so 0 0.037 this tells me that the average uncertainty is very very small so it is easier to guess it is easy to guess which symbol is transmitted we know the lesser the certainty lesser the uncertainty more easier to know which symbol is transmitted okay whichever symbol uncertainty is less that symbol would have been transmitted coming to the next one again two symbols transmitted see the probability 7 by 16 9 by 16 this is 
very hard to guess this itself tells you because the uncertainty is very high the difference between these two we can make out 7 9 so it is very less so we can it is difficult to guess which symbol transmitted in this it is very hard but here it is easier because this uncertainty you can see this is 1 by 256 this is 255 by 256 so easily we can tell the more the uncertainty average uncertainty is very less so uh, it is easy to guess which symbol is being transmitted if the average uncertainty is less now seeing the probabilities we can easily it is very difficult for us to tell that which symbol is transmitted and also h of s we can see it is very high similarly coming to this it is same both are same with probability so here having same probabilities this is difficult not difficult but impossible in this case 7 by 16 9 by 16 it is hard to guess either symbol s3 occurred or s4 occurred because the probability between these two is not very it is not uh, very so uh, what what do we tell it is there is not much difference between them so it is hard to guess either s3 or s4 but as the difference between the two probabilities here of two symbols is very large difference is more i can easily tell yes s1 only transmitted because it's of low probability but here as the probabilities of the two symbols remains the same it is very not hard to guess but impossible to guess which symbol transmitted that is what so entropy gives you uncertainty of the source so more the uncertainty easier to identify which symbol was transmitted